Let's talk Mookie Betts and do some digging in. And let's start with this. This is crazy. This is not done in the history of baseball. Mookie Betts, a superior fielding outfielder, is going into his age 31 season as he moves to the second most difficult defensive position on the field behind catcher. Hall of Fame shortstop Robin Yount moved from shortstop to the outfield when he was 29, famously. Hall of Fame shortstop Ernie Banks moved from shortstop to first base when he was 31. You don't move to shortstop as you get older. You move away from it. And it is a drastic move. Before this year, Betts had started just 12 games at short in his career, all last year. But as it turns out, it seems he can handle the position. Here are the defensive metrics from last season. He's a plus defender in right field. But realize, he was once plus 30 defensive runs saved. That's DRS, defensive runs saved. Last year, he was only plus three. He was plus six at second base. That's excellent. And you see at shortstop, that's a zero. You see the number of innings, only 98 innings, but zero defensive runs saved at short. That means he was league average. And by the way, league average at short is fine. Small sample, but that's what we call holding it down in the business. All right, so this now, sabermetrically, is a defensible move, so to speak. Here is the defensive spectrum, as first put out by Bill James in the 1980s. From the most difficult, at shortstop, second base, center field, all the way across to DH and first base. Again, Bill James put this out in the early 1980s. People were not thinking this way, but as a player ages, he moves this way across the defensive spectrum. Ideally, you put your good offensive player at his most difficult position that he can handle and not dip below league average. If you put your big hitter in a defensive position on this side of the defensive spectrum, it's a competitive advantage because there is a small pool of good hitters on this side of the spectrum and there is a much larger talent pool over on this side. So this is a great idea on paper, but there's something about this that is also concerning. Betts is obviously a superior athlete, but you are taxing your best all-around player. The average shortstop sees a lot more action than a second baseman or a third baseman, let alone a right fielder. They say they have to move Gavin Lux out of shortstop. Okay, fine, but they have Miguel Rojas, a plus fielder who played there for them last year. Does that sacrifice a little offense? Yes, but I believe in playing your best defensive team, and I also believe in protecting the Golden Goose. On paper, it makes sense. In the real world, risky. Moving a player to more demanding or an alien defensive position increases the risk of injury in the real world. I didn't like it for Jazz Chisholm. I don't like it full time for Aaron Judge. And I think the Dodgers will regret this. Tell us what you think. Let us know on MLB Now at X, specifically in a year where they're expected to dominate. Should the Dodgers be moving Mookie Betts to shortstop? We send it back to the guys. Fellas, Ronnie, Alex, what do you think? Well, I, I was thinking as, uh, as Brian was talking about how unprecedented this is, Alex, is that all I could think of was Tiger Woods and swing changes. Like, he needs that because he's a competition junkie. And I think this might work for Mookie in the same way. Yes, he's done it in right field. We saw what he could do at second base. He's always wanted to be a middle infielder, stopped at that position by a little guy named Dustin Pedroia, who's pretty good for the mm -hmm. Red Sox, right. wants to move into the outfield. This is, I think it will work. I, I, I think it's risky, 100% what you're saying. But I think it's going to work out because if I got to bet on an athlete, I'm betting on Mookie, on Mookie Betts. For sure. And I mean, your show here, MLB Now, right? It's, you're thinking outside the box. Credit the Dodgers a little bit. To, they have a problem. They're thinking outside the box a little bit. We have a superior athlete, a guy that can do it, mm -hmm. at least for the time being. This is not probably a permanent move for him. Obviously, he's a gold glove outfielder. But I think. But how about for the season? It seems like it's yeah. happening well, for the for se season. There's one thing for the season or for the rest of his career. Oh, no. This well, is, he can. This is, yeah, this is, but this for is this a, year. This is a need that the Dodgers have, obviously, that, you know, has, has been created over the course of spring training with Gavin Lux struggling a little bit in the uh, in, at, at shortstop. But also, too, you, it allows you because, you know, you've kind of had the reemergence of Hayward. So you have a good outfield mix that you can do that. So your best possible lineup is with Mookie Betts at shortstop. OK, now you have Miguel Rojas to spell him at times, but I don't think as the season goes on, like when you when I've watched Mookie play shortstop, like the movements are there, like the athleticism yeah. is there. Yeah. So he's going to be able to do that for the time being to, to, to plug up a hole, to plug up a problem. Now, as the year goes on, as you get to the trade deadline, I think you start hearing the Adamas to the Dodgers, not so much because Mookie can't do it, but because they're trying to improve mm. other positions. Willie Adamas. 
Willie Adams. The same. Okay, right. A superior fielder over with the Brewers now. If if he can do this now, why wasn't this done eight years ago? Like, well, like if that if this was like, oh, why why not? You had Dustin Pedroia. He's not playing Xander shortstop. Bogarts. No, he's playing shortstop. Yeah, but you had Xander Bogarts or shortstop. Right. You had Dustin Pedroia at second base. They needed an outfielder. Hey, we have a superior uh, athlete that plays the infield. He he should be oh. able to play the outfield too. Also had uh, a Trey Turner uh, when he came over. So there, there have been people there. Um, I can hear what Alex is saying is that if Jason Hayward doesn't make the move he did with the bat last year mm -hmm. and brings that goal to it, then it's maybe not, it, uh, it doesn't happen. Again, to bring up Pete Rose again, Pete Rose moved when George Foster was in the outfield. Jason Hayward was uh, above uh, league average, not George Foster. All, all you're trying to do, there hasn't been a team in the history of the game that tries to put together a team that is not going to win. They're trying to put what they have in personnel, the best possible people in each position, and Mookie, because of his versatility, Helps him out for this season. You don't think it'll hurt him offensively or be like taxing to him or put him at some sort of risk? I think that, that that is a that is something that would yeah. hurt many players. It won't hurt Mookie Betts. Okay. That's See, just how good he is. It struck me as too cute. It hits me in the yeah. gut as I, I, too cute. And I know I'm supposed to be, oh, no, that sabermetrically I should be all over this. And yet I'm like, hey, I don't like this. I don't listen, like listen, it. Listen, there's certain teams, and certainly the Dodgers at times can be like this. We're smarter than most people, and we know what we're doing. <laughs> we're going to figure you know, it out. You know that's we're right. better yeah. Than, yeah, yeah, we're better than you are. Right. But in this case, Mookie Betts is Look, just a, an unusual player. There's, o there's always a level of risk. With mm -hmm. that, especially with your superstar player. But I think you look at the, the player individually and how they'll be able to handle that. And I think for the Dodgers, Mookie Betts, it, it's like, hands down, it should be no problem. You know what the last time this happened for a significant player was on your ball club, right? Yeah. Prince Fielder gets signed at first. Miguel Cabrera goes to third. Yeah. Now, Different Diggy, position. What, yeah, um, yeah, right, it's a different position. Um, Miguel, I, I thought it was a bad move at the time. It turns out, like, he, Miguel Cabrera was below league average, but he didn't kill you at third, right? How did that and transition he won two go? MVPs both. Well, he can hit, <laughs> right. But also, like, he was a big guy moving to third. There was a little bit of risk there. I think the Braves did it with Freddie Freeman briefly, and I'm like, be careful. Again, these guys, they're, they're, bat, they're the golden goose. Like, don't, don't, you know, risk the bat to put a guy in a position that he couldn't handle. Now, Cabrera did, though. He, he was able to hold it down and play well, and, I, and I think certain guys like a Mookie Betts, a Miguel Cabrera, they're so good. They're so, they're so good at what they do in the box. It's not going to matter where they play. Their hitters hit. Oh, look, put Aaron so, Judge at short. So, uh, look, if that's if like put if all these guys can play, like put them there. You I know, can, I'll give you this. All right, there's probably no other player in the game that you could do this with except Mookie Betts. Yeah, okay. probably all right. right there. So we'll revisit through the season. Okay, and see how it's all working out. <laughs>